Hey guys, what's up? By Zach the Tron here from One Half Gazette here with the next video. And I know it's been a few days. You guys might think uh, I've you know been missing an action the last few days, but just been a little bit busy. And I'm glad to get back to making a video for you guys. Um, this one, the title might be a little bit misleading to be completely honest. Um, it's it's basically my point is in this video that jump spells at Town Hall 10, and you could even apply this to Town Hall 9, Town Hall 11, probably, but mainly at Town Hall 10, in my opinion, uh, jump spells are being overused and they're being used without any thought and any consideration for the spell space that, that the jump spell takes up. So I'm going to illustrate some of my points through some of the attacks from the One Hive Alpha guys uh, in the last arranged war. So you guys will see some awesome attacks. We'll take a look at, at one that didn't work out as well that actually did use a jump spell and why uh, the jump spell probably wasn't needed and how the, the plan could have been changed a little bit. But to start off, we're going to take a look at a few attacks that don't utilize that jump spell. And the thing is having, because rages and heals, no matter what composition you're using, uh, whether it's a uh, bowler minor, more of a queen walk minor, um, even a air attack, whatever, rages and heals are kind of, the, they're the spells that are going to, uh, you know, give your troops the, the, the boost, whether it's the damage and the speed or the health boost, they're giving the boost. Uh, the freeze spells, the freeze, the freeze spell is kind of in its own category, um, but, but if you think about a freeze spell, people put so much thought into, should I bring a freeze or another rage? Is the freeze worth it? That same kind of thought has to be put into the jump spell because you can see on this base, uh, no jump is needed. The queen can reach that inferno. And sometimes that's the, that's the case. All you have is your queen. You're counting on her to take out that inferno because the bowlers certainly won't target it, but that's okay. You can depend on your queen. Uh, one thing you have to realize at town hall 10 is that, uh, it takes a bit of a leap of faith sometimes to get these three stars. Uh, the plan doesn't have to be for sure. There can be some dependent uh, components of it. But as long as you kind of have an idea of, uh, of what's going to happen, sometimes it can work out. And you can see here, he has an, actually a rage for his miners that got them through the inferno a little quicker. Uh, that definitely helped. I think that rage was intended for the kill squad, but things died so quickly, he switched it on to his miners. But the thing is, he has an abundance of heal spells now. He, can, uh, he still has one heal spell left. He used one uh, just a moment ago to heal them up after that inferno. And at this point in the attack, it could probably go either way without the heal spell. I'm not saying this would be a fail. Actually, he has a lot of miners left up, so he might even get the three star. But having that next heal spell definitely helps. And it, it's just, like I said, people, they think they have, they have a plan. The plan involves using a jump spell. There's no thought, um, at least from what I see, uh, in terms of can I approach the base a different way and not have to use that jump spell? People don't value the jump spell. They just think, okay, I have four spells uh, besides the jump to use that are like rages or heals or freezes or whatever. How am I going to use those uh, for my attack? And that's not the right way to think about this. And I might be wrong. Some of you guys might, you know, be really cognizant of how you're using the jump spell and making sure it's really needed. But from what I see, people just kind of, you know, throw in that jump spell because, you know, that's how I have to enter the base. That's the best angle I decided. But the angle you enter the base should also be dependent on, can I enter at a different angle that I might not like as much, but I can avoid having to use that jump spell. So let's move on to the next attack. Um, this one's an even better illustration because the last base was kind of spread out. Um, it might be somewhat obvious not to bring a jump spell. This base is a little bit more compact and, you know, depending on the angle, you could find yourself bringing the jump, but it's not necessary if you come at this base from the right direction. It might not be the most preferable direction. You might think that your, your, your bowlers might do a little bit more, you know, uh, damage or get more of the base taken out from a different side of the base, but it's going to be the best bet because you can save that, uh, spell space and I don't know how you value a spell like 15 20 troop space whatever I don't know how they how they equal how they equate to the troop space but it definitely is valuable and it's worth considering your entry um, if you don't have to bring a jump you can see this kind of lane or this compartment of the base leads all the way back to almost to that next inferno tower so literally his bowlers can just walk through this uh this little area. I'm not sure. I think a few walls went down just for whatever reason. Maybe some of the bowlers uh, got a second bounce on some of those walls. But anyway, they're making their way through the base. He doesn't need a jump. Here come the, the uh, miners. And one thing that surprised me is when I was watching this attack for the first time, I saw him use that second rage. I thought, okay, this is kind of a waste. He has, that second rage was too late. Most of his bowlers had died. And I'm like, he's not going to have any heal spells uh, really for his miners. But he had three heal spells. And when that, that kind of, you know, you think about that. How is that possible? Well, he didn't bring a jump spell. Five spells is a lot, guys. Uh, if you can... 
bring all rages and all heals in a bowler minor attack or in a, a queen walk minor attack, which is probably more common because you don't have a kill squad you have to jump through. But either one, if you can avoid bringing the jump and just bring rages and heals, you'll be surprised how many spells you have available to use on each part of your attack. So uh, that next heal definitely helped. It kept those miners up while they were facing the Inferno and the Skelly Traps. And uh, th those heals can make a big difference if you can get them down in the right locations because the miners get that bonus underground uh, unlike any other troop. So uh, Lord Nubis crushes this base. Awesome attack. And we'll take a look at one that didn't work out quite as well and kind of why I think the plan could have been a little bit different without using the jump spell and possibly freeing up another spell to maybe even get the base three starred. So as soon as this wraps up, we'll head into the uh, to the activity log or whatever you call it, the event log or whatever you call it for the war and find that attack. I believe it's at the three hour mark. Yeah. Um, right here. Yeah, we have Thor, and uh, nothing against him. I think that this was somewhat of a solid plan, but the angle he enters at, probably easier in terms of funneling in kind of the initial entry, but I don't think it was the right way to do it because he has to bring that jump spell. And even with the jump, he doesn't get like as deep into the base as he might have gotten had he not even brought the jump. So let's fast forward to when it starts. He might be dropping some troops up top. Uh, here comes the golem, dropping it right down in that compartment. The funneling's pretty easy, just some army camps to take out. Uh, no, no big deal there. Uh, wall breakers in. A few bowlers do start to walk on him right there. I'm not sure if they come back in or not. I know that they end up walking, so the funneling wasn't that great to be honest. But um, he has the majority of his troops moving in now this jump spell right here i want to talk about for a second this compartment has the inferno and then it has two tiles on either side of the inferno before the wall you cannot in any reliable fashion i'm not sure if it's possible or not you guys can let me know in the comments because i'm sure a few a few of you guys know if it's possible but i know this for sure you cannot reliably put a jump spell and jump from where this where this gold storage is right like right there over to where this wizard tower is across the this um I guess an eight tile jump is what you call it, eight or six tiles, depending on what you're counting. If you count the walls, it's eight tiles. Uh, you cannot reliably do that. So I'm not sure if he was trying to do that. His jump was pretty far out, so maybe he was. And maybe it depends on how fast your troops move through because the jump spell might uh, affect them a few moments after they leave the spell radius. I'm not exactly sure how it works, to be completely honest. Um, you guys can let me know. But my point is, it's, it's not going to get him that deep into the base. It's not going to let his troops get into this area over here. So all he's doing is kind of jumping into the Inferno, taking out the Queen, and maybe getting this compartment. Had he come in at this angle, he's still going to get the Inferno. The Queen will shoot it. He's still probably going to get the Queen taken out because uh, she'll probably walk up to the point where the bowlers or the Queen can target her. Um, and the, they can probably take out this, uh, these two buildings right here, um, that by term of by way of a second bounce probably because that altar has almost no hit points and the giant bombs in the, that are in the middle right between all those buildings those will probably still be disarmed for his miners when they enter the base so when you think about it i'm not sure if this was a cleanup attack or not but when you think about it he can get pretty much the same value by coming at a different angle not having to use that jump and i think that that compartment over there is a little bit more a little smaller so it would have kept his troops a little more focused in on taking out the important things uh he does you know get a solid part of the base taken out with his kill squad but now he has less spells for his miners. Uh, you can see them making their way through right here. The wizard tower and the, the queen altar don't go down. So the miners are going to die uh, taking that out. Now, I'd, to be honest, I don't know if the it would have made a difference coming from this angle. But I suspect because the troops would have been more focused as they kind of funneled up into this narrow area right here, they would have taken out the wizard tower and the altar. And that would have disarmed that double giant bomb spot. Uh, now, he does trigger it pretty cheaply right there with one of his miners while his main group still making their way around but um, I think that the jump spell would have made a big difference had he been able to use that for something else but just to sum up as this attack kind of uh, wraps itself up when you think about a free spell for example especially and I, I'm, a, I'm a bad example too even personally of, of bringing a jump spell when it's not needed but when you think about a free spell me or a lot of people who I plan with who are attacking at Town Hall 10 you know, you're debating, should I bring the free spell? How much value is it going to get? Can I do a different entry, different troop composition? Can I, you know, move my spells, my troops around to get the most effective and uh, the best combination of troops and spells? And sometimes you don't bring the free, sometimes you do. 
but that's based on what kind of value it's going to get you. It seems like at Town Hall 10 and maybe other Town Hall levels, you have people that are bringing the jump spell just kind of a second nature. You just bring it because, yeah, that's the way you're entering the base. But when you take it, keep in mind how you're going to enter the base, and if there's an alternate uh, route into the base that might not get you quite as much value, but will save you that spell space, which can be, can be much more important if used as a heal spell or a rage spell or even a free spell somewhere else in your attack. So keep that in mind. Uh, the jump spell is not free. It comes at the same price as every other uh, normal elixir spell besides the clone spell. Please, Supercell, give us a, an update for the clone spell, by the way. But that's kind of a whole nother story. So anyway, thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys, especially you Town Hall 10s out there, kind of rethink uh, your strategy, what you're doing exactly when, when you're planning your attacks, because I think this is something that a lot of people have been overlooking lately. So yeah, uh, sorry about the lack of uploads lately, and let me know if you like these videos that are a little bit more focused on certain uh, specific things within, within the game for different Town Hall levels. I'll try to keep you know the content for every other Town Hall 9, Town Hall 11, uh, all the other Town Hall levels uh, coming out over the next few days. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.